What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Herkaway here. And I just had to make this video because a lot of people hit me up and they asked me, Herc, what kind of parts should I put in my brand new gaming computer? And I'm like, I don't know. Just throw some parts in there and call it a day. I'm just kidding. No, it's, I tell them, you know, it depends. You know, what are you playing? What monitor are you trying to get? But I think the very most important question is, how much money are you willing to spend? And I know people don't like to hear that question, but we have to be realistic here. Do you really want to go cheap on an investment that you want to last three, four, five, or maybe even 10 years? Really? So coming up, I'm going to give you my suggestions on what to put in a brand new computer. Now turn up. All right, guys. So this video is strictly for U.S. residents. Um, if you're out of the country, feel free to, you know, translate it or uh, convert the currency or whatever may have you. But again, this is just for U.S. residents. So first things first is, again, that budget. I can't stress enough that trying to spend $400 or $500 on a gaming PC and trying to play high-end games is just not going to work. You can get it to work, you know, by going on eBay or going on Craigslist, whatever. But do you really want to use your hard-earned money and spending on something that's used, second-hand, hand-me-down? Someone already had their hands on this. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the factory people. But trying to spend $500, it's hard, you know? So I recommend between six to $800. The more you have, the better parts you can get. The more parts you can get, really. But if you only have, you know, six to $700, you can still have a decent quality gaming PC. Speaking of gaming PC, let's go ahead and jump into my suggestions for your parts. CPU. All right, if people think of CPU, they will think of more cores. The more cores I got, the better gameplay I'm gonna get, the more frames per second I'm gonna get. And that's kind of true, but AMD tried to run with this marketing and it didn't work. All right, AMD chips before Ryzen, they have more cores, yes, but the core to performance ratio it's horrible. I mean horrible. So if you're gonna when you get a CPU, I always recommend going Intel. If you can get the Haswell. But now that Skylake and KB Lake is out, there's no reason to get a fourth generation chip. I mean you can get a fourth or a, a fifth generation chip Broadwell, but Skylake is the way to go. Alright? I'm just again this is my recommendations. Alright. Next is your motherboard. Your motherboard and your CPU kinda go hand in hand together. In fact, they do go hand in hand together. You can't get a fourth generation uh, CPU and then get a sixth generation motherboard. It isn't going to work, trust me. All right, they have to match and they have to be compatible. Um, if you're going to get a sixth generation motherboard, then you have to get a sixth generation CPU, which is Sky Lake. Same thing with a seventh generation, uh, which is a new Cabo Lake. So just make sure that your motherboard and your CPU is compatible. If you're not into overclocking, but you need more RAM space, go with a Bravo series, like a Bravo 150 or a Bravo 250. If you're only going to use two RAM sticks, just get yourself a Hotel 110 if you're going to try to cram it into a tight case. Next is RAM. Um, now, shout out to Science Studio, Greg, who proved that the speed of RAM doesn't really have a major impact on gaming performance. All right, so just because one guy may have 300 megahertz on their RAM stick doesn't mean that it will outperform a one guy who has 21, 33 megahertz on their RAM sticks. All right, and I'm just talking strictly gaming. Now, obviously, memory intensive applications will play a major role, but when it comes to gaming, no, it's not going to happen. So, if you don't need to get you know, the 2400 or 2666 or 3200 megahertz, it's okay to get a 2133 megahertz, all right? Next is storage. 
and I have to go ahead and say this. Just because the SSD is faster than a mechanical hard drive doesn't mean that it will outperform it when it comes to gameplay. Now, yes, it will load faster and it will bring it up faster, but as far as gameplay goes, you're not gaining much. So if you're thinking of spending, I don't know, $300 for a one terabyte SSD, you're making a major mistake when you can take a fraction of that $50 and get it towards a one terabyte Western Digital or double it and get a two terabyte Western Digital. Throw your, all your games up there, get a 250 gigabyte SSD, throw your Windows OS up there and maybe Adobe or Microsoft Office and you'll be set. You can even throw a couple of games up there if you wanted to. But I just want to put that out there that getting a bigger SSD doesn't mean that I'm going to have faster and better gameplay. Okay. Next is a case. Um, case is really opinionated. It's subjective. Me personally, I prefer NZXT cases. I got one for myself. I got one for my wife. But again, it's up to you. How do you want your case to be? Do you want to be a shiny case? Do you want a window? Or do you just want a case where your components could go in there and you could throw it in the desk and play your games? It's totally up to you. All right, just make sure you have enough slots for your hard drives. Make sure you, you don't get a micro ATS case and get a regular ATS motherboard because obviously it's not gonna fit. So just make sure that's compatible. But other than that, a case is a case. Power supply. Tom's Hardware has a great guide on what type of power supply you should get. So highly recommend you check that out. My top three brands, EVGA, Seasonic, and Corsair. Now some of these brands, they don't make the best. Well, you wanna stay away from their lower end quality products and get more of their high end quality products like the, the uh, RXi or the RMI or maybe the Supernova series, all right? And again, Tom's Hardware has a great list on what type of quality power supply you should get. And finally, how can I forget the whole thing that puts the thing together, the video card. And I'm not gonna go too much into this because that's a whole video in itself. I'm sure you've seen benchmarks about what this video card can do to this video card. But when you're thinking about getting a video card, think about this. Am I going to upgrade my monitor in the future? Do I care about getting a higher resolution? Do I care about getting 144 frames per second? Do I really care about these things? Because if you don't, you do not need to get a top-end graphics card. You can get a GTS 1060. Hell, if you don't care about high quality, but you still want to play the newest game, you can get a GTS 1050 Ti or RS 470, all right? But for that mid-tier build, I would just go with an RS 48 gigabyte or a GTS 1060 6 gigabyte. And again, I'm not gonna go into details of which one is better because they're pretty much on par with each other. But again, just go with one of those two and you should be good. And folks, that's it. That's all I gotta say. I mean, it's a great time to be a PC gamer and I hope this video helps you. If it does, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If it didn't help you, give me a thumbs down or whatever. But please leave your comments. Tell me what kind of build you have. As always, subscribe to the channel. It's your boy Herco8. I'm out of here. Peace.